All right, welcome back, guys. I um, told you last video I'd show you about making tires. Um, so basically, what I have are two sets of molds here. I have two molds. These are for the the big yellow aircraft F-18 twin. These are just for the mains, and these are made out of silicon. And then here I have two molds for the Durjet Cougar, a main and a nose wheel. Um, both of these molds, or all of these molds, use a original tire to uh, to make them, and they have their their benefits, or their, their, their pluses and their and their pitfalls. Um, we'll start with the the rubber ones first. Uh, the F-18 tires are the first ones that I had ever done. So it's kind of a, well, it was a pretty steep learning curve. Basically, in order to make these, you have to make the tires. You have, you have to have a metal form, which I use a stock tire, and then you have to have a parting board or some surface around it. So what I did, took a piece of plywood, I think it's just quarter inch aircraft grade ply, I took, took a Tupperware container, and the Tupperware container had a ridge all along the bottom. So I just stuck it on a belt sander and sanded that ridge off and got it fairly fairly flat, but it was still kind of had a little bit of a, of a hump in the middle. And that's where the, the plywood here comes in. The reason for the plywood is I just took CA and I put it all on the bottom of that thing, stuck the plywood down on the table, and then I just took a, I think it's another huge block of a, aluminum or something. And I just pressed it down in the center of that, that Tupperware container so the whole bottom of it was nice and flat. Then I took a tire and a razor saw and I cut the tire in half. Then using a rim, or I just drilled a hole here in the center of the Tupperware, then using the original rim, I put a little piece of aluminum tube there. You can't really see it that well. Now you can. Put that there and then I put the the foam tire on the rim, the half the foam tire on the rim, about halfway on the rim. CA on the back side of the foam, stuck it down there, and this gives you your center alignment pin. And then uh, basically all I did is I just took some two-part silicon rubber, mixed it up, poured it in here, let it cure. Well, after I sprayed on this spray-in mold release that they have, let it cure, pulled it out, did another one, voila, two, uh, two halves of a two tire halves and that's where it was easy and it was quick I think it took me about two days to make the, the molds um, and that's about where the the benefits leave you it, it was quick and easy that's about the only benefit to it um, let me zoom in on these molds and I'll show you the pitfalls of silicon rubber and this is a this is pretty soft silicon rubber it's only 30 30 duro or whatever they have some little bit of harder stuff, but I don't really think the harder stuff will, will help you any, because it's just gonna make it harder to, to, to pull it out. Um, what you can see is when I cut the tire, I cut it right in the middle of the, the tread pattern. Don't worry about this, it's a new tire, this is way back when. Um, but I tr cut the tire right in the middle of the, the center tread line, and that's how I figured out where the center was. Well, when you do that, you leave very, very little material on each side of the mold half. You see just bending it, I just tore a part of it off. Um, that's that's the downside of this silicon rubber, is it's really fragile. I got, oh, I don't know, I think I pulled six or eight sets of tires out of these molds, or six or eight tires per mold. So six or eight out of this one, six or eight out of the other one. And um, that's pretty much their useful life. They, these molds are pretty well shot. My friend, I'll just throw them away, but I keep holding on to them for, I don't know why. But I mean, you see the, the tread pattern starting to, especially the centerpiece here is gone. A lot of the the next outer rib of treads missing, and yeah. Another thing is since this stuff wiggles around so much, I mean, you can see it, it wiggles around a lot. When you go to line these two mold halves up, you almost always get one side off a little bit. But for the first few flights. It, it'll sit there and kind of have like a, a thunk 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 noise or look to it. 
air fine is shaved, but after a while it'll it'll wear itself round. Unless of course you use hockey puck neurometer <laughs> neurometer rubber, then it never wears itself around. <laughs> it just stops its kids. Anyway. So what I did in order to try and get it to line up better is I took brass tubes and I stuck here and you can see them sticking out and then I just squeezed it in there to put holes in the other side and it made it better but they still don't line up very well and overall I mean it was a workable failure is the way I look at it. Which brings me to our second set of molds. These I did for a guy down here in Florida for a Durjet Cougar. Um, he sent me his original tires, which are inflatable because he can never get the original ones to stay inflated. And he finally just got fed up with it. So using his original tires, I'm not going to go in a whole long process of how I use his tires because it took me forever to figure out and really, I don't, it, it, saying it would just confuse people. So I used his original tires and I made these out of a urethane casting resin. And, uh, these turned out a whole lot better. I was very, uh, very pleased with these. And how I came up with these is I actually took a uh, aluminum paint can that was just bi just bigger than the actual tire. And uh, yeah, you should see the looks I got at Home Depot with these two little bitty wheels and trying to figure out paint cans and stuff. But on the bottom of these paint cans, they had these little it was kind of like a, a corrugation on the bottom of it and they were around corrugated around the circles and they got bigger as they went out which when I first saw it I was like oh that, that's nice you, you kind of have like a pre-made circle so uh, what I did is I got the tires and I got them to where they would actually kind of stay in shape and then I took that paint can and I took a mic to the tire on the, the inside of the tread figured out what the size was and that's took a little bit out, like like eh, five or ten thousandths of the diameter out. So it would fit in there really nice and tight in that paint can. And then I uh, took the Dremel tool and I just went through the paint can, cut out the center of it, sanded the edge real nice and deburred it. And I stuck the tire in the center of that paint can. I was like, oh, great, perfect, it fit. And then I was just gonna leave it at that. I was just gonna leave the tire in the paint can, pour the, pour the moment here on the top of the paint can. And then uh, reality hit me and I was like, oh wait, that's not going to work. I was just going to pour out the bottom where the rim would go. <laughs> so uh, then things got a little interesting and different. So what I did is I took a, oh, it was a PVC pipe. Um, it was a cap for a piece of PVC pipe and it had like a little rounded bottom of it. And I got, a, I got the cap and then I got like a regular piece of PVC pipe. I cut the top of the cap off, the, the half round part of the cap where it would actually block off the tube. I cut that off and then I slid it over the piece of PVC pipe and then I put the metal inside the cap portion of it so it would rest on the PVC pipe. And then I cut the PVC pipe to where it was oh, about that deep and then just set it on top of a piece of... Uh, a piece of monocoated quarter inch plywood and I just hot glued it around to the monocoat so it sat there and, it, and that made the bottom of it and then what I did is I took the casting or I, I, I took it all off and I sprayed the back side of the tire and everything to make sure with spray release that would come loose and I mixed this casting resin up now I, paid, I, I made very I made sure not to put a whole lot of air into the casting resin as you're mixing it because the more air you get in there the more porosity you get and I'll show you some I'll show you that here in a moment. So I mix it up and I took a torch and I just just heated the, the stuff in the cup with the torch. You know what the torch does, it, it heats the whole stuff up so the, the air bubbles come out easier. Once I got the big air bubbles out, I poured it down through the hole for the rim to where it came up about midway up the tire and then I just stopped and I left it to cure. Once that was done, I pulled the whole piece of PVC pipe cap and all off of it. I sat there in that little piece of aluminum for the bottom of the paint can. I took that off the tire. I sprayed more mold release on. And then same thing. Mixed up the casting resin, hit it with a torch, poured it in there, hit it with a torch again. And all hunky-dory and we got all the bolts, all, all the air bubbles out. And this is what we end up with is two nice piece res uh, casting resin, hard, very hard. 
tire molds. Um, then I took the rim, I took one half of the uh, one half of the mold off, sat there and put the rim back in, used the rim to, to mark the hole for the center alignment pin, marked it with a hand drill, took the rim back off, went over to the drill press, drilled the hole, put the whole thing back together, went back over to the drill press, drilled the hole through the other side, other side, then just took a piece of thick wall aluminum tubing and hammered it in there, rounded the, the tip of it off of it. And then what you have is this nice little mold here that just clicks right together. And then also while it's done, see I got a flat spot here. I hit that on the bandsaw to sit there and that's your alignment key right there. That tells you, you put a piece of plywood, something flat, doesn't matter, ruler, just put it on there. And when they click together, you know your your two tire halves are lined up and then you're good to go so once these are made pull the original tire out and now our mold is ready for prep i just want to show you the detail i mean you can see it took nerd jet and it put it right in there i mean it, the detail that these things came out with is just phenomenal you can see down there you got one of the tread one of the the tread lines the other half you got dirt jet and you got a lot of the tread lines there. Same thing on on this big hunkin' one. This casting res is fairly cheap, so I didn't really worry about making these huge molds with excess material. But again, you can see all the little cast all the tread lines and stuff are in there. And this is actually leftover material from the tires of that. So these are two different ways I have done tires for people. Um, the rubber ones I originally did for myself on, for my F18, and they worked, and they worked well for a couple of parts. Um, if you put a little bit more thought into your alignment pins when you do the rubber molds, they would actually work well. They work out really well for, uh, for just one-off tires or just a few small low production, like maybe six parts, six tires. That's about it. Uh, these rubber molds, I think, cost me about 80 bucks, 80 to 100 bucks. Um, these casting resin ones, same thing. They're about 80 to 100 bucks, maybe a little bit more. I think these are about 150, really. But this stuff is, I mean, it's inconsequential price-wise. So now that you have molds, what do you do? Well, before we get to that, the third set of tires I did were for a guy over in Switzerland for a, a sob. I think it's off Viggen or Draken or something, I can't remember, but they actually use machine aluminum molds, which those things are phenomenal to work with. The machine aluminum, they went together, they were lined up perfect, the, the detail was there in every one of them. I mean, they were they were nice, and that's why the F-18 or the F-14 tires, I actually had a set of molds machined out of aluminum with all the writing and all that stuff for the tire on them. Unfortunately, it caused copyright and trademark uh, law, I had to leave out some stuff like the little Goodyear flying shoe emblem and, and some other stuff. I couldn't completely copy it or else I'd kind of be opening myself up for some legal litigation that I really didn't want to, to deal with. So it's not there, but it, it, it's close. Anyway, machine the women molds, if you have the money and you're doing a large production run, definitely do a machine the women. Uh, they're much nicer to work with. Second option for best option is this casting resin. And then absolute last resort is this silicon rubber. So for making the actual tires, the material you buy, it comes in kind of like a pale yellow color. It's a two part, I think like one's clear and one's brown. So it turns out that's like pale brown, yellow mess looking stuff. So you have to pin it. The stuff you use is a so strong black whatever color tint and this stuff you only put you don't put a whole lot it's like I think it's like five drops per well, basically five drops for whatever you mix it up um, I always put a lot more <laughs> I put like 15 drops for the big F-18 tires and then for these little for the little guys on the dirt jet cougar I did like five drops and eight drops or something like that and they ended up being like really really black tires so that's how you tint the stuff. It's just a so strong black color tint. It's a very, very concentrated color. Um, 
the material that I used, again, was from Smooth On. It was called Oo Moo. I think it was O O M O O. So Oscar, Oscar, Mike, Oscar, Oscar. And I believe the last material I used was either a 30 or a 40 durometer. Um, so it's Oo Moo 30, Oo Moo whatever. And the, the number after the Oo Moo tells you the durometer. Um, so you mix that stuff up, part A, part B, and I think it was equal parts, or like two to one, or, or whatever. And then once you mix it up, mix this stuff in there. And uh, then you can let it sit for, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute to kind of let some of the big air bubbles out. And the key to this stuff is you want to pour your, you want to pour the tire very, very slowly. I mean very, very, very slowly. And you want a very, very small stream. So what I would do is I would take, it's like a mixing cup, epoxy whatever, or I take like a red solo cup, mix the stuff up in there, dye it. You got it in your cup now. You let it sit, let all the air bubbles pop out. And then before you pull it, take your cup, fold it in half. You see how it makes that nice little point down there? You want to fold that cup to the edges are basically almost touching each other like that. I mean, you want, that's how small you want your stream. And when you pour it, don't pour it where you got lettering. You want to pour it somewhere away from your lettering. I mean, when you pour it, basically I'd hold the cup just like you got me to see here and I'd push it together. And I would sit here and hold steady and I would just pour it in this real nice small stream about, oh, eight to three sixteenths of an inch in size. And you want to keep it real, real nice, small and steady and don't move it. That's the other key is don't move your stream. If you start moving around, you're gonna get these giant air bubbles. I don't know why, but every time I would try to move the stream to kind of sit there and help fill in the bottom of it quicker, I'd always get an air bubble right here at the bottom surface and I'd never get it out. Because once you get about 3 16ths, a quarter inch of thickness of tire built up, if there's an air bubble on the surface, it's not coming out. There's just gonna be too much material on top of it to let it work its way up to the top. So you sit there, and you just keep pouring and don't let it stop. That's the other key. Small stream, same spot, not on any detail lettering. Constant speed and don't stop. <laughs> Those four things are like the most important that I found. So just keep pouring it. And what you want to do is you know how like uh, liquid it has that like little meniscus or whatever they call that thing at the top of a cup to where it'll sit there and kind of bulb over the top without rolling over. You want, you want that on both of these halves of the tire. You want that nice little bulb. And the, bulb the bulb on the top is very, very important as well. So keep pouring until you get the bulb. Go to your next tire, or your next half. Same thing, pour it the same way. Small stream, consistent, not over any lettering. Don't stop. Until you get that nice little bulb, go to the next one, and so forth, so forth. Well, once you get all the tires poured, if you have any rubber left over, if, if you ran out, just go mix up a little bit extra, whatever. That's that there, and once you figure, once you pour one set, I mean, you can pretty much guess what you're going to do, especially if you just do like a nose wheel or a main wheel by itself. You can you'll know exactly how much material to mix up for the next time. Once you have that done, take your little hobby torch or whatever, put it on there, get it fired up, and then you come over on your uh, your rubber and from about six inches away four to six inches maybe a little closer depending on how hot your torch gets just sit there and work your way around just work around do a couple things and what you're doing is the same thing as with your with your casting resin you're sitting there and you're heating that stuff up so those air bubbles can pop up quicker you're not going to get a lot of air bubbles like if it's way down here at the surface you're not going to get that one out you'll never even know you had it there until you go and pull the tire out so uh, just keep doing that a couple of times, work your way around, work your way around, work your way around until you get tired of it, tired of it, or you run out of air bubbles to get out. Then leave them apart. You don't, you don't try and force them together because all your, your, all your liquid rubber is going to just pour out. You want to leave them stuck together for a little bit. What I mean by a little bit is every, oh, I don't know, 10 or 20 minutes, half hour, or something like that. I forget the exact number that I was using. <clears throat> what you want to do is you just want to come take your finger and right over that little bulb, just touch it. Just very, very lightly touch it. You don't want to stick your finger down in it. Just barely touch the surface of it and pull your finger away. If you pull your finger away and you've still got rubber on there or if it's still wet, 
let it dry a little bit more. Come back, let it stick, stick your finger, touch it. And what you want to do is you want to basically put your finger to it, pull it up about an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch away from that bulb, and then have it let go of your finger. And when it lets go of your when it let lets go of your finger, there should be no residual or very, very little rubber residual left on your finger. At that point, take your mold halves, put a new chain, and join them just like that. I mean, you got to go really, really quickly with it because the stuff's still liquid up under that little layer that you just thought you just stuck your finger on. So it's still going to want to roll out. So when you sit here and you get it at that point, you want to join these things fast. That way you don't lose any of your rubber and you don't get any air bubbles or air pockets in there. And then once it's done, take a, take a C clamp, uh, whatever, just something, just clamp it somehow. And even a piece of center block or bag of concrete, something. And just clamp these two halves together really tightly. Not so tightly that you bust your mold, but tight enough to hold them together and squeeze out that little bit of extra rubber. That's why you see the, like the rubber in here. That's where it would squeeze out and I just never cleaned it off. The last time I used them. Squeeze it together and leave it to cure for about, oh, I think I was using six hours. I think I was doing about two or three sets of tires a day for that, that for that sob. But leave it, uh, leave it sit for 12 hours, 24 hours, six hours, whatever, whatever it says on the, on the product sheet. Then, once it's dry, take your clamp off, pull your mold out, pull out your tire, and, that, and just bask in your glory of awesomeness for making your own tire. And that's how easy making your tires are. You spend more, once you get the plugs, the, hard, or the, the mold is the hardest part. And the only thing hard about that is getting all your parting planes and getting everything figured out. Once you do that, man, making your own tires is a freaking piece of cake. Um, again, the only thing about that ooh ooh moo stuff it's it's solid rubber and it's heavy so if you're trying to save a pound by making your own tires that's not the stuff to use these f18 tires i think are about half a pound a piece with the old with that new move 30 that i was using or whatever i mean they were heavy but they lasted that was the thing you weren't sitting there putting replacement tires in that thing after every six or eight flights off of off of asphalt and it, 15, 10, 15 bucks for a pair of tires for those foam things from yellow aircraft. It gets expensive. You go through a set of tires on a weekend. So that's how you make your own tires. When I get my aluminum molds for the F14, I'm gonna buy two products. I'm gonna buy some Uu Moo stuff because I need some for the, the next set of uh, F18 tires I'm making because I'm gonna do the same style as this. I'm gonna make them out of casting resin for my buddy Buck because I owe him a set. And uh, I'm gonna make some F14 tires. So, tire making 101, there you go. Tire making 101.2 or 1.1, whatever you wanna call it, or, or 202, I don't know. Anyway, that'll come once I get the molds and the materials for the F14 tires. Hopefully you guys learned something, if not, Sorry. <laughs> Questions, feel free to ask. Anyway, y'all have a good one. We'll see you back in the shop.